Is anything in Belle du Jour real? This is, I think, Louis Boonwell's, the Spanish director's greatest movie. And let's go through it, review it, and analyze it, and see what this movie means. You probably just watched it and are unsure what's going on in it. So let me help you break it down and analyze it, coming up next. Bill Du Jour is about Severine, a young French wife, part of bourgeois society. She has a husband, relatively faithful to him, I suppose, at the beginning of the movie, but over the course of the first 20 minutes or so, becomes interested, strangely perhaps, in becoming a prostitute and going into the world of seediness, cheating, adultery, and just exploration of sex outside of her marriage. The movie begins, spoiler alert, so beware, of what looks like a dream sequence of Severine imagining herself in some kind of strange S&M fantasy involving her husband. These kinds of fantasies, dream sequences, memories, and a mix of all those, these kinds of scenes show up throughout the entire movie, making you wonder just what parts of this movie are actually real, what parts are imagined, what parts are fantasies on Severine's part. À quoi penses-tu, Severine? À quoi penses-tu? Je pensais à toi, à nous deux. The movie shows Severine living a public life or life with her husband and then a private life in which she is acting as a prostitute. And in that world of prostitution, she goes through a sequence of events, several different encounters with, I would say, several different sexual fetishes. And the movie is an exploration of perhaps a budding feminist perspective, a woman who, as the saying goes, wants to explore her sexuality or all kinds of sexual preferences and she is living, as I said, two lives. Now, first of all, Boonwell's camera work is absolutely wonderful here. The camera is always moving. Sometimes it feels like a kind of a security camera looking in on Severine's private life, but there's always motion and action. This movie is never static. Now, maybe that mirrors Severine's own busied internal world of hiding things from her husband, of being secret, of being excited or nervous. And so you get this camera always shifting around. That might also mirror, you know, this sexual things going on in this movie as far as, you know, desires and lusts swirling and moving around. Now, Boonewell is a tricky sort of director. At once, he's railing against you know, the Catholicism he grew up with. On the other hand, like Bergman, couldn't shake his Christianity, the, the Protestantism that Bergman grew up with. I don't think Boonewell could shake the Catholicism that he understood or knew well. So I think Bill Dujour could be watched at least two different, maybe opposing or contradictory ways. Let me explain those to you. The first way, probably more obviously to some of you, is that Severine is breaking with bourgeois private life, ordinary family life, and the Catholicism that she grew up with, and entering a den of prostitution, which is exploration, adventure, sexual deviancy, certainly it would be called that at the time, and she is wandering around, trying to find new paths, new ways in her life, that starts with the imagination. So the opening scene of her memory, or imagination, fantasy, whatever it is, comes alive there. That prompts her, along with the libertine Husan, who prompts her as well, to go to the house of prostitution and live out her fantasies, live out her imagination. And the question is, what's the result of that? Maybe she's in a way like a secret artist trying to explore things she's never seen before and they're forbidden to her. One of the things going on with this movie certainly is that it seems unjust for the libertine like Mr. Husson to go to the house of prostitution and you know do whatever he wants there but then the female, Severine, it's forbidden for her to do that. So some notion of equality between men and women as far as sexual deviancy goes, that comes up in this movie. Now, the second way to watch this, I think, is actually the Catholic way to watch it. When first Severine goes into the prostitute's apartment, there's a very interesting cut to a scene that may be a memory, it may be imagined, it may be false memories, but she is a little girl, perhaps, 
did not take the communion wafer, rejects communion, rejects the body of Christ, and that is her entry into the apartment, which then begins her adventures or her destruction, as it were, as a person who, by the end of the movie, and again a spoiler alert, perhaps ruins her husband's life in a lot of ways, especially his health, and damages their relationship. The movie is full of discussion of consequences of Severine's choice going into the apartment and prostituting herself during the day. Now that brings up the ending, which could be another fantasy, and the movie ending with the fantasy is an interesting commentary on Severine, only being able to live in that world, stuck in it, never getting into the real, and reshaping her life, perhaps for the better, but also as an escape. She's maybe avoiding the fact that her husband is permanently injured, she has to take care of him, and her secret has been revealed by Mr. Hussan. You can read the beginning and the ending of this movie as fantasy sequences on Severine's part, the movie being controlled in part by her imagination and memory combined. I do have a wild theory though, which is that maybe most or nearly all of this movie is Severine's imagination. She wonders what it would be like to be a prostitute. And so almost the entire movie, including the ending, maybe just part of the ending, is made up by her, her, her uh, sexual imagination exploring what it's like to be a prostitute. Now, I have some speculations about this. This is a time when, one, Freudianism, still popular, this idea of the buried id and the buried ego, and that the superego is the civilized part of us controlling us consciously, but then we have these unconscious desires that are worked out maybe in our fantasies, as it was for Freud in psychoanalysis, and whether you believe Freud or not, and nobody really believes him anymore as far as the discipline of psychology goes, you still have this idea that my own self, I have part of me that's unknown to me. And if I ever unlock that or explore it as Severine does, I think that's what the apartment is for her, uh, may be disturbing for me, but also exciting at the same time. And then in the United States, I know this is a European movie, but in the United States you have... Alfred Kinsey, The Surveys of Ordinary Americans, and this idea that the sexual deviancy is far more rampant. All of these interesting sexual practices, which now you can find readily on the internet, but back in the 1960s were more suppressed, let's say. Those were prevalent, according to Kinsey. Now, whether he was right or wrong, I don't know. But this idea of the burgeoning sexuality and open talk about sexuality sexual practice in the bedroom in particular because this movie foregrounds those is what's coming up here as a new thing on the horizon in a popular cinema or an art house cinema at the time now i'm sure this movie does not seem so risque to you today because of what i said what's on the internet what you can access what's in film even today and yet for 1967 this is risque this is on the cutting edge, I suppose, of exploring things that, let's be frank, in the Bible, in ancient literature, in all kinds of literature, is overt. In fact, I called this a Catholic movie, or you could watch it as such. She prostituting herself is a common metaphor in the Bible, or in Christian theology, of the church going towards idols or worshiping idols instead of the one true God. The church prostitutes herself. She's the bride of Christ, but she goes after other gods. She tries to marry other gods or have sex with them. Well, this movie is a metaphor of that. I don't think Boonwell maybe knew that, but here it is with Severine desiring other men, all kinds of other deviant practices, and it resulting, as I said, in the devastation of her husband, the collapse, perhaps, of the relationship, and the revelation of the secret that she does not want to be told. So my big question for you is, how do you watch this movie? Do you argue with what I said? What else can we add to what I said? So let us know in the comments what you think. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you and have a great day.